So hello everyone, we're back again. Uh, so uh, the, on the last presentation and also on the previous presentation, we've been seeing how to make the presentation, how to make the contents and things. And now we're going to see, and even we have shown some um, topics on how to use AI for our presentation and things like that, right? So now also we're going to see how to use the generative AI for preparing reports. So first, what is generative AI? I mean, even if this is not our, uh, uh, this is not the title, let's somehow see how what generative AI is and how it is benefiting the reporting or the writing world. So it's generative AI can help writers to write text content by using LLMs, so large language models. This is not that important, but LLMs, they're generative AI system capable of understanding and generating human language text based on vast amount of data they have been trained on. So what you're supposed to know, what I want you to take from this is that there is the large language model and you can understand or you can guess what they are from the title, right? They are large language models. So they, it's all about language. It's all about understanding human language. So they are trained to understand the human language so that we can communicate, ask or get an answer from them depending on uh, our question. So that is what generative AI is, the base of generative AI is large language models. So um, why do we use generative AI for reporting, for report preparation? I mean, on this session, we're, we're seeing specifically how to prepare the report, but of course we're going, we, we use generative AI for many tools, but specifically on the report preparation, it have the efficiency, the consistency, scalability, and reduction of bias will um, encourage us to use generative AI. I mean, um, they are efficient, consistent. So there is the same format throughout, the, consistent in tone, in their formats, uh, what they are trying to describe, and also on their data somehow. So the uh, generative AI have many uh, advantages for our report writing, presentation writing, and things. Scalability, we can take, for example, it might be hard sometimes to analyze some large or vast data into bring some conclusion based on that, I mean, if that is not related directly related with our project, it might be tedious to go through some like large things, large data, large information. But generally, Gen AI tools might, and it's easier for those tools to bring some conclusion or insights from those kinds of data. And also, of course, reduction of bias. But those characters, uh, like we can achieve those characters in like hundred percent or more than that, or we can also achieve more characters than this if we use generative AI properly. How can we use Gen AI properly is the point. So prompt injuring. Uh, have you ever heard about prompt injuring before? Can someone describe me how? So like, let's try to make this interactive. And so if there's someone who have heard and also have some information about prompt injuring, Hello, anyone? Uh, it's not like I'm just trying to make the session interactive so that I am sure that you are following the presentation and you're somehow understanding the topics. Okay, so uh, you should feel free in order to talk or to ask or to give some suggestions in every part or sessions. So we can continue. What is prompt injuring? Um, prompt injuring, it's the process where you guide generative artificial intelligence or generative AI or again, gene AI, solutions to generate desired output. So as I told you, those four characters, they might be even more than four characters. We might get, we can get actually vast inform, I mean, vast advantage from generative AI, but that is if we use generative AI in a very proper way. So how can we use this properly? It's the first one is the prompt. What is prompt? Prompt is the question or the information. For example, I want to ask some AI tool probably the most known AI tool is ChatGPT, uh, right? So I, I I wanted to to ask something, some information about some country or place or some food. So the question or the, the, the design or the art that I'm going to craft the prompt or the question is called prompt engineering. The question itself is called prompt and prompt engineering is the art of crafting or uh, making the question uh, very clear and uh, somehow understandable by the model or the chat GPT in this case, like in, in the case that we're talking. So prompt engineering, is, it's a process where you guide generative 
AI or Gen AI solutions to generate the desired output. Uh, is it clear about prompt engineering? Uh, maybe you understand what prompt is. Prompt is. If not, we cannot proceed. So is everyone clear on? Okay, thank you, Leah. And everyone, you can show me some emojis if you, if the idea of prompt engineering is. Okay, we're up. You can go. Oh, sorry, it was a mistake. I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, never mind. But have you understood what prompt engineering is? Yes. You? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay, so I will consider everyone has uh, is on the same line and proceed. So, creating if how can we create effective prompt in order to get at our desired output or an output or an answer that is really able and uh, honest or really close to honesty? I mean, have you ever heard that uh, some models uh, the, when when they say that some models or even chat GPT hallucinate? Which means it gives us some information that is not there, that is false sometimes, or that isn't that doesn't exist. So better than saying I don't know or I can't. I really don't have the direct answer for this question. It hallucinates and gives us another another answer or another information. So in order to decrease or to, to minimize that, what we're supposed to do is to shape or to give the question in a in a proper to give our point in a proper way. The first one is clear instruction. Uh, so clear instruction that is. We need to have a clear instruction ensures that the AI understand exactly what is being asked and can generate relevant content. So like some thoughts that I sometimes notice is that there is this uh, culture that we use to search things in Google, right? And we we sometimes bring that culture into chat GPT. So that is not right because we kind of, as I told you before, chat GPTs or an another generative AI model uh, tools, they are made in order to understand human language. So depending on that, like we should imagine that we are communicating with with another human or another being that understands the human language, not human actually, but a being that understands human language. So we need to make it clear or concise uh, concise, and give it a clear instruction in order to get a good output. So as we, as we do for humans. So for example, let's see this generate a summary of the quarterly sales. This is not specific, actually. In this example, if you see, we're asking generate a summary of quarterly sales data highlighting key trends and performance metrics. We're um, asking the model or the Gen AI in order to generate us a summary of a quarterly sales data, but there is no data here. So probably the generative AI will um, will suggest or will give us an answer about its own data, its own uh, quarterly sales. But for, let's assume that we have a quarterly sale so or a data that we give. Depending on that, we want it to generate a summary. So this is a very good point. It's a clear instruction. So we need a quarterly report sales data. And we need, we, we also g uh, give the things that we want it to, to be highlighted, which is the key trend and the performance matrix but rather we might give us like analyze cells see so we might be uh, thinking about the same kind of thing or the same kind of question by writing both the prompts but it will absolutely give us different kinds of uh, response we're, we're going to get different response from both the questions because this uh, this one is more clearer than the second one so the first one is making our instruction or prompt clear the other one is adopt a persona which means, uh, as I told you before, we should consider like like we're communicating with other beings that understands the human language. So um, let's refer um, ourselves. What are we doing? Or we want to get some information about the thing as a maybe as a student or as a marketing analyst or as a doctor or as as a what what is your what is your position? So adopting a person persona helps say the context and tone for the generated content. So the, we might get different content when we put our position in different um, in different label. Like I said, as a marketer, as a user, as a programmer. So here, as a marketing analyst, provide insight insight into customer demographic based on recent survey data. So you, I think you got the point here, right? Any person, anyone with different field can ask an insight of customer demographic based on the research survey data, rather than my. I mean, they're differing from the marketing analyst. But specifically here. That if the marketing analyst is 
or if you are asking the model, the generative AI as a marketing analyst, the response will be some information or knowledge that is useful for marketing for uh, for a marketing analyst. We can just say also analyze customer data. So this will be very generalized, vast, and something that is not specific. So the second one is adopt a persona. The third one is specify the format, which means um, specifying the format guides, the AI instruct in structuring the response appropriately, such as what do we want? Well, in this case, I know we're talking about reports, but even in reports, we might miss something. Uh, put it in a bullet point or a summary or a report or even in a question format or in a conversation format. What is the format, the format that we wanted to create? So uh, writing the format or the, uh, including the format of the output that we want in the prompt will help us to get again a precise or an output that we wanted. So we can see the prompt, generate a detailed report on marketing trades in tech industry for the past year. So we just asked to, that we were looking for a report and also uh, what sector on the marketing trends in the tech industry. So this is so specific, so detailed, and also um, the, the the format of the report or the format of the, the output we want is just stated here. Also, we can we can consider this as a bad prompt, which is provide information about tech industry trends. That is just an information. What type of information? We, you know, report reports are information. Something mentioned as a bullet point is also an information. So, what type of information is? It's better if we can specify this. The fifth one is avoid leading answers. This is really a problem most of the time. So there, there we have a hesitation in on the question that we're asking ChatGPT. We have a hesitation or 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 a bias towards one of um, towards the answer. So sometimes we might include that uh, biasness. So we shouldn't include that. For example, avoid. So let, let's see the description. Avoid leading answers. Ensure that the prompt doesn't bias the AI towards specific conclusion or response. So uh, normally. Uh, as you know, generative AIs, first they learn from the data they have, and also they learn from human experience, right? So what type of experience are we giving them? Like the question that we're giving them is also one sort of human experience. So they normally came to the to the things that we've said, or to the, to the things that we have just given as a point. Uh, mostly this happens when the model or the system doesn't have a specific or some answer that is, is not so sure about the answer or the doesn't understand the question very well or doesn't have information to provide, it tends to be yes, asked to the answer or to the question or to our suggestions that we've we've gave. Let's see this. Examine the impact. Actually, let's start from the back prompt. Show that digital marketing is effective for customer acquisition. So this question, we're just sure, we know this is true by the way, I know, but uh, whatever the question or whatever the issue is this prompt is about, just consider it as it might be right or it might be wrong. So show that digital marketing is effective for customer acquisition. See, we just decided that, first of all, we decided that the digital marketing is effective for customer acquisition. And we ju we're just asking the model to show us or to demonstrate how it is useful, but we're not asking if it is useful or not. But the right prompt should be examine the impact of digital marketing. Just examine, it might be right, it might be wrong. So decide the answer based on the information or the data that you have on customer strategy, on uh, strategies on customer acquisition in the e-commerce sector. So I think it is clear, right? Here it's all, it's already biased towards some sort of an answer. And but here we're giving the generative AI tool to decide its own answer and limit the scope. This is also so important. So it's just imagine asking a person too much information at a time and expecting something from them very specific. So that is not uh, applicable most of the time. So we need to limit the scope. So actually, let's see the description. Limiting the scope uh, of focuses the AI on specific aspect of the topic, preventing the generation of irrelevant or off-topic contents. So uh, it might also generate off-topic content. Also, it might generate some a very little, little information about everything which are not going to be relevant or which are not useful. Let's see the bad point. Discuss everything about tech companies. In some cases, we're not even supposed to include everything discuss something discuss information or discuss things about tech companies it's it's very vast what do you want to know about the tech companies 
and most of the time uh, there's something in our mind and that we don't put we don't put it out there or we don't try to explain it for the generative AI because we consider that we usually consider that it will understand or we, we consider that if we are going to write in details or one by one it's going to be so humanly but the the right way to talk or to communicate with generative AI is considering that as a human or describing every little thing and make it specific or like limit the scope but uh, try to describe the little like every steps or every uh, details that we want an answer for also we've mentioned avoiding leading answer on the number five right but sometimes if the answer or if the information that we're giving is based on true story i mean not true story but based on real information then it's okay it's okay to lead the model towards the right way okay uh so uh, discuss the everything about like yeah this is the bad prompt then the right prompt is compare and contrast the pricing strategies of two major tech companies in the smartphone market so this is so specific what is the output that we want from this question is put it here so this is not fast and it's provided with a limited scope so there we're going to have a different a very different answer uh from these two prompts uh so like sometimes of course we're going to give some uh, first initial step uh, prompt and we might not get the results that we want so we uh, like we need to go through the prompts again we need to evaluate the initial response and identify key issues for so uh, evaluating the initial response means whether the response is right or not wrong in some cases we have as i told you before we have some information in basic concepts and we wanted to know a detail, detailed information on that so we might just check and read and know that the initial response is wrong or yes so we, like we, we we can judge so what is the thing is if the first or the initial response is wrong and if we're going to continue asking the the ai model generative AI on the same issues or on the same topic so the whole uh, history or the whole chat of the or the whole conversation is going to is not going to be that accurate or right so it's going to be biased towards the wrong information that it initially it should initially respond so it's a very messy thing to evaluate the initial response so because we, we can uh, we can go through the history i mean gpt or models most of the time they remember their history so their initial response matters a lot and then refine prompt clarity so simplify the prompt after identifying the response this like go over the steps that we have mentioned before like simplify or clear out the things that are not clear or the things that you know we, you can answer the things or after reading the answer or the generated output you can see the things that makes the a uh, model to, to the generative AI to go to the say, uh, to go to the same direction or you know, to the right or to the left to the right or to the wrong I mean sorry so you can uh, clarify based on the initial response the initial results and adjust scope and specificity and also again like limit the scope uh, and the skills and provide examples or guidelines so this is so important so if you have some information that is based on um, we have some information information actually right we're going to ask things that uh, we know something about that and we need some clarification or detailed clarification about it so provide it provide with an example with an example that we know it's right and use feedback loops which means give it a feedback order this information is wrong check again this information is right so what you've said before this answer is uh was another thing so what do you mean use feedback loops communicate with the Model. Uh, and then I would recommend so there are different kinds of uh, gen AI tools right we, we, mostly we use ChatGPT, and but, but also there is part for Google and also the copilot for um, Microsoft Edge right so you need to check 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 them too but what is different is uh, you might use some uh, for tech issues and for to write some reports in, in this case if it is it's about reporting so we mainly focus on chat gpt but uh, if you're if you're needing things like for um storytelling or to generate some codes or technical questions you might prefer bard or copilot so here there is a link provided to compare how uh, each generative ai compare with each other and which generative ai tool to use for 
uh, based output for your situation. And also there's Grammarly, if this is about writing, right? So Grammarly, I think most of you might have heard or used this before. It's uh, it's an extension that you can, it's also an, an extension that you can use on Chrome or you can download it from their page. It's uh, included or embedded on every uh, part of you. I mean, you can, when you write, if there is any error by default, for example, if you're using some uh, Google workspace, you might, uh, if there is some error in your uh, like in what you've written, so you might get the correction there. So just like this, Grammarly also enables you to correct your spellings. Uh, it, it helps for uh, rephrasal, or you can check Grammarly on this page. It's one tool of generative AI. Generative AI, AI. yeah. So you can check this reference, and if you have any question, you can ask now. Oh, you almost said just I'm waiting for access the link. Okay, ah, uh, it's not a question. So, do you have any question? Anyone? Okay, is everything clear? You can show me with emojis if it is clear. Okay, any confusion or maybe? Okay, so this, the presentation will be added on the technical content too. Uh, if you have any question, you can address on Slack or you can ask now or you can add, uh, you can ask on Slack. Thank you. All right, happy weekend, guys. It's Friday. Bye.